yeah, hi there everyone. My name is Welexi. Uh, I also run this game, uh, not as fast as Diane does, but I'm very happy to be here uh, commentating. Um, and yeah, very happy to hope to support Game Over Cancer. Oh, just a quick heads up, Diane. I think you're still muted in your stream. Well, people can hear your intro. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I got that turned on. Um, hi. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, we're professionals. This is exactly how it's supposed to go. Oh yeah, this is definitely exactly how it's supposed to go. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's fine. Um, so I'm not sure if people heard uh, the original intro from Dian, but maybe you want to introduce yourself again, just in case. Yeah, I uh, said my name is Dian Kido. Uh, I speedrun this game. I tend to go very fast, but it's very explosive, so it can go either way, hence the um, estimate. And I'll do my best to show you how fast we can really go. Fantastic. Well, um, if you are ready, Dian, I'll be happy to give you a countdown. Yeah, ready when you are. Okay, let's do it. So, five, four, three, two, one, go. Cool, so this is Cyber Shadow. Uh, this is a 2D platformer. Um, you play as a cyborg ninja called Shadow, uh, uh, who you can see on your screen right now. Uh, he, Diane is just running past our friend Elgion, who we see throughout the game and unfortunately don't really talk to that much, but he'll be around to drop helpful things that we mostly ignore. Um, <clears throat> essentially, this game is a little bit like uh, old, difficult platformer games like Ninja Gaiden. That's kind of where it was inspired by, or the inspiration comes from. Um, and in my opinion, it draws a little bit of inspiration from other games like Mega Man and a few things like that as well, because you pick up a lot of abilities as you go through the game. Uh, and there's a lot of sub-weapons that you use. Nearly all of them come in handy on the speedrun. Um, so we are going straight into Chapter 1, which is uh, Geothermal Towers. Um, so. Essentially, what's going to happen is there's 10 chapters to go through of varying lengths, um, but uh, as we go, um, we, we will see the run become much more complex, much more difficult, much faster. Um, in this first chapter, um, Dian's only, or Shadow, is only able to basically move side to side uh, and jump and slash uh, with the sword. Um, no other abilities and only five health. Um, so this first chapter is uh, a little bit more chilled out, um, but still actually very, very precise. And this whole game is actually incredibly precise because um, you, you have to keep moving. Um, the whole game is very, very cycle based, and we're going to see lots of demonstrations of that. Um, if you miss uh, a, a jump, or, for example, get hit by an enemy at the wrong time or something like that, you'll find that the cycle that you are trying to catch is off. Like, for example, these moving platforms will be in a different place um, and that will cost you time or possibly even your life. And believe me, there are many opportunities in this game to die instantly, um, which is one of the things that just makes it so difficult. Um, <clears throat> another thing is uh, there's a lot of enemies like these uh, crazy birds here uh, that kind of follow your movement, albeit not exactly, not too precisely, but they will definitely cause a hindrance because they kind of go where you go. They sort of read your inputs a little bit. So this is another nice example here of Diane manipulating the cycles in the uh, game because uh, if he hadn't gone through this section exactly precisely, these moving platforms would be in completely different places um, and it would take uh, an extra few seconds to make it through. And we are already at our first boss. This is Smasher. Um, Smasher pretty much just tries to slam the ground with you underneath it and fires turrets at you. Um, so he's pretty straightforward. Essentially, you just destroy the turrets and you hit this weak spot eye in the middle and he's already dead. Uh, congratulations, Dian, on getting our first boss down. Um, that one okay. Smasher... <laughs> Smasher's going to drop some extra health for us. You can see that our health bar in the top left just went up by one more spot. Um, so, something we're, we're going to see a little bit more here is uh, our ledge boosts. Uh, it's actually very, very difficult to notice them, uh, but it's a, essentially a way that Diane is moving where he's leaving it as late as possible to jump when he hits a ledge. Uh, and it, it gives about a four frame speed boost. Um, so it's, it's a way that the level speeds up. The, the way you can notice it if you're quite eagle-eyed is that sometimes there's like a cloud of white dust that kind of comes off of the ground when, when Shadow hits the ground. Um, it's very kind of difficult to notice, but it does speed the game up quite considerably, especially in these earlier uh, levels. 
Um, so yeah, a lot of this first level is mostly just making your way through, um, manipulating the cycles effectively. Um, and this game is very, very precisely rooted as well. So, and there are a lot of backup strats, of course. So essentially, if you miss a platform or if you take, get hit by an enemy that you didn't mean to get hit by, which will happen a lot, I promise you, um, then uh, you know you 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 are you tend to play this game so much that you know exactly what's going to happen instead. So there's lots of backups. Um, so this is the master, uh, this uh, pink-haired character here. Uh, although it's actually uh, just a hallucination of the master, um, it's not real. But we, and there's our friend Elgion again, uh, dropping some health that we don't actually need because as soon as we pass over this checkpoint, we get full health anyway. And we're up to our first boss of the game. This is Apparator. Now we're gonna get as close as possible to Apparator to avoid his first attacks. He's quite straightforward. You just stand in his face attacking and then you get a little bit of extra damage here. He's gonna charge over. Now what's gonna happen is he's gonna dash into the air and Diane is gonna position himself in an exact place where he's actually gonna be clipping Apparator's toes with his attacks. Very nearly a quick kill there, but still a pretty good kill. Some t if you do it exactly correctly, you can actually kill Apparator whilst he's still in the air. And we rescue our friend, the Green Ranger, from our clan. And he's going to drop our first ability pickup. This is the Shuriken. So you'll notice that our SP in the corner is just filled up to full on five. And we now have this, uh, we have a Shuriken ability that's going to be used exactly straight away. As soon as we go into the next chapter. Um, but essentially we can throw projectiles now. Um, on to chapter two, which is the disposal facility. And there goes our Shuriken. So, um... This level is, is as, as the previous level, is heavily cycle-based. So um, this is very precise movement required here to get through these enemies at the exact right times, avoid the boxes. Uh, Diane's just going to hit that switch, and he's going to grab some extra SP here on the left. So his SP of our bar at the top left is going to fill up to six. That means that he is going to get an extra use out of any of his special abilities. At the moment, we only have one, which is the Shuriken. Uh, but we will gain many more as the game goes along. Um, as you can see, it's very key here for Diane to be avoiding uh, these boxes from the air and avoiding the various uh, enemies which are following him around the map. Um, because if he, as I said, misses even one of them, he's going to end up uh, in an awkward cycle. This enemy here is uh, one of the most hated in the whole game. Uh, it starts off sat still in the middle of the room, but every time you damage it, it uh, ejects these flies, which kind of follow you around the room. And then it itself comes out. That's a very good fight. Well done, Diane. Um, the annoying thing about that one is once it's ejected itself from the wall, when you jump up to hit it, it actually tries to avoid you and goes further into the... Ah, oh, unfortunate there. That that laser is a one-hit kill, but it's okay because we've spawned on a checkpoint that's literally only about one second away. Um, so uh, that's, a, that's an okay death, we can accept that, but that's death number one. Um, now that's an excellent damage boost, very well done. So damage boosting in this game is very interesting because um, you actually always get knocked backwards from the way you're facing. Um, so it's uh, very key to turn your turn shadow facing the other way uh, before you take the damage. Diane here has just picked up our first sub weapon. He's bought it from the shop, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, and he's gonna be using this blade extender to hit Laser Brain. Laser Brain has a weak point in the center, um, and when you hit it with the blade extender, it actually takes triple damage. You'll find that I'm finding it very hard to keep up with everything that's going on on the screen right now because everything's <laughs> happening so quickly. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the first boss of this stage, already dead. Uh, Laser Brain actually, if it takes enough damage uh, before it's managed to um, kind of get to a certain point in the fight um, by essentially hitting it in its weak spot and doing that triple damage to it, kind of shuts down and stops trying to do anything and, and just stops attacking you completely. Um, so uh, that's what happened there is Laser Brain was just completely, uh, just completely smashed and, and, and stopped functioning. Um, so now we're on to our first kind of semi, I'm going to call it an auto scroller uh, because you can't control the speed of this lift. Yeah. Um, because yeah. of that, we have this enemy over here. I call him Fred. Fred is a very special... Oh. Damn it, Fred. <laughs> well, that's the end of Fred, unfortunately. Unfortunately, that's the end of Fred. I'm hope I hope everyone liked him. Um, yeah, um, so yeah, this is a good opportunity to, to take a, a breath, but um, yeah, we still have uh, kept our blade extender. Uh, Diane didn't take any damage during that fight. Um, so. 
one thing to point out about the sub weapons. So at the moment, Diane's blade extender means that he's hitting us slightly further with his uh, sword. Um, is you can see three yellow dots on the top left of the screen next to Diane's health bar, uh, and uh, that is actually the health of the weapon. The weapon takes damage at the same time that you do. Uh, and so if you take damage, it goes down by one at the same time. And if you take three damage, then you lose the weapon and that's it. And you can't refill the health of the weapon. You just have to get a new one. Um, so yeah, that's that's how the weapons work. Um, we also, uh, I, I, I should also talk about the shopping in this game because that was a, one thing we kind of had to skip over very quickly before Laser Brain. Um, underneath uh, Shadow's uh, health and SP there, you've got Essence, which he's has uh, 54 right now. That is essentially money in this game. Lots of enemies and, and, and so forth drop money or Essence. And you can use that to buy items from the various shops, including weaponry and so forth. Uh, so this is uh, another cycle-based area. This was almost perfect going through, but you saw that Diane took a few bits of damage on the way through that did kind of slow us down a little bit. And we are on to the boss of Chapter 2, which is Scrambler. Scrambler is pretty straightforward. Um, he's just going to do two different attacks where he slams the ground and he fires a kind of fireball at you. You can jump up in the air and avoid both. Uh, and as soon as Scrambler's health bar hits zero, he of course has another one. There's a baby Scrambler inside. Who does very similar things, mostly jumps over your head and tries to buy a fire fire more fireballs at you. He's already finished. And that is chapter two. Congratulations. That one actually burned better than expected. That was very smooth. Now, uh, this is uh, one of the best abilities in the game. This is Rising Fire. Um, so now, uh, if Diane uh, presses down and attack at the same time, uh, it, he'll do like an attack which fires three fireballs into the air. Um, and this is interesting because if you do it in extremely close range to an enemy, it can actually do a maximum of four damage. So it's one of our most, our most powerful attacks in the places that we can use it. And it's used to destroy bosses in certain areas uh, much quicker than perhaps you should be able to. We're on to chapter three, which is Mecha City Ruins. Um, so this is a, a fairly lengthy chapter, lots and lots of opportunities for instant death. Um, so first things first, we've got these enemies which kind of follow Diane around and try to block where we're going. Uh, and of course, more flying enemies that get in the way. Nice little cash pick up there. It is very important to manage money in this game. As I mentioned, you can buy things from the shops. And as I said, this, this run is very precisely rooted. So you need certain amounts of money at certain points in the game. We're going to do some damage boosting through here. You're going to see Shadow is going to turn the other way just before he takes the damage. And we're actually going to do some ledge grabs in this chapter as well. What you saw there is on that, that platform to the left there, Diane was able to jump up to that platform even though it's much higher than uh, an area that you would normally be able to jump to. And the reason for that is there's on certain ledges in this game, uh, for some reason, you're able to kind of, it, when you jump at them in a certain way, uh, the, the game thinks you are already on that ledge and it acts like you were kind of falling off of it. You're about to see another demonstration of it here and then another one right there. Um, it's it's like you were kind of falling off of it and it helps you back on. Is that the way you'd phrase it, Diane? Yeah, it, it, it basically abuses the coyote time you have um, to make use of, yeah, basically forcing yourself back on the platform. The game is like, oops. <laughs> well, you're, you want to get back on. Absolutely. So, interesting thing about that ledge grab trick as well is you can only perform that trick when you're playing in 60 FPS, uh, which Dyne is. Uh, so if you're playing in uh, 120, you are not able to do that trick. However, you are able to hit the bosses or other things ever so slightly faster. Um, but it's certainly faster to do the ledge grabs, I believe, over the course of a run. Yeah, the differences are very minimal, so... You can yep. definitely play either version and you'll still be fine. So, we're uh, outside. Um, we've got these kind of proximity mines that we have to navigate our way around. Some of them explode up and down, and some of them explode side to side. Uh, obviously, they, they are the same every time. That's not random at all. Um, but uh, manipulating them is very important. Um, so, essentially, this one here, uh, as you can see, Diane just about made it through. Um, gonna damage boost over this guy. And on to our mid-chapter boss. This is Hunter Tank. So, Hunter Tank is uh, fairly straightforward. He's got this kind of section on the top which needs to be destroyed. Already gone. As you saw, the use of the Rising Fire there did uh, four damage to it, and, and to Hunter Tank's finished. I didn't even get to finish explaining it. Very nice and quick there. <laughs> Hunter Tank's done. Let's go. Yeah, let's Already keep up the over. speed. <laughs> <laughs> Forget that. Don't worry about Hunter Tank. You know what? Forget it. <laughs> um, cool. 
So something that's really happening here uh, that you may not be noticing, that you may, yeah, you may not be noticing if you're not too familiar with this game, is Diane's making this all look incredibly easy, especially the sections that are bosses and stuff. Just the way he's moving through these sections of game, jumping over certain pits and stuff. There's a lot of these areas that are actually one-hit deaths, um, and if you take damage in the wrong place, you get bounced backwards into green slime and just die. Here, see if he's got the shot. Nice, very good. That's uh, that's the snipe. So that's a shuriken shot in mid-air uh, to hit that enemy. Um, and it, if you don't hit him with that shot, then he drops bombs in the way and he slows you down a bit. So very good, well done. Uh, yeah, that's very a very scary them. snipe to get. Uh, you have like four options. You can miss it. You can hit the box. Uh, there's, uh, it's it's the worst. Yeah. It's also one of those tricks that, you know, even when you've done this game a million times, you feel like you've got it completely down, and then it's one of those things you suddenly start failing at randomly, you know. <laughs> it's exactly that. Um, here's going to be another nice shot here. Oh, there we go. You're able to hit the button with the shuriken, uh, and that allows the platforms to raise early. Normally you have to go over and actually hit it with your sword. Um... But it's it's almost like a kind of uh, it's almost like a kind of dance that you do through these chapters. You know, you see you know exactly where the enemies are going to be, and you're kind of making your way through. And if you make a mistake, then you have backups for each one. So we are fast moving on to the boss of this level, uh, Bio Hunter. But before we get there, we're going to make another purchase. We are going to buy our second sub weapon, which is Swag Blade. This is a very interesting and very frustrating momentum based weapon. So essentially, the way this works is this weapon kind of follows where you're going or moving or jumping. Uh, Diane's going to use Rising Fire to knock the weapon up into the air and hit Bio Hunter. And then he's going to do some jumping to make the weapon swing around and hit Bio Hunter whilst he's in the air. Phase one of this fight is already over. We're now moving on to phase two. So Diane's going to position himself on the right-hand side. And as he jumps down, the blade is going to swing in the exact right way. Then he's going to hit the boss, rising fire to nearly finish him off uh, whilst he's still standing there. Good fight. Good fight, good night. <laughs> yeah, Biohunter just... Biohunter just wasn't fast enough, I guess. No. Uh, so, now we get uh, <laughs> another extremely interesting ability. This is Airstrike. Uh, for rescuing our blue friend there. Airstrike, as you can already see, allows us to smash downwards um, through the floor. Uh, you can do it slowly, uh, and you can do it fast by pressing the button again, and you sort of slam down at, to at you know maximum speed. Uh, this is really cool because it allows you to bounce off of enemies, even if you don't have SP. And this is something I should have probably pointed out earlier, is that you can still use your abilities if you have no SP. They just don't really do that much. So the Shuriken, you throw a really weak Shuriken out in front of you that doesn't do anything. Um, an Airstrike, you just use it without the fire, or without the dash downwards. Something, the screen's about to explode. Boom. Okay, cool. Um, Diane was actually able to use the swag blade there to hit a bomb off screen, which is something you're not supposed to hit until after this section, which blows up the wall. And it means that later on, after we leave this dream state, we can leave very quickly. I'll show you what we mean when we get there. This is uh, our first temple of the game. This is the monkey temple. So we're going to use uh, the skills we've procured so far to race a monkey to the top of the temple. And you're going to see a lot of use of the uh, airstrike here, which is the where he makes the sword face downwards and he hits these lanterns and boxes. Very nicely done. That one's tricky. There we go. Oh, almost. Very, very good monkey temple there. Already over. The monkey is nowhere to be seen. Um, you know, casually playing this game, I think that took me like 15, 20 attempts the first time I did it. And now it's just uh, first time every time for us. Yeah, the monkey is, um, I guess, uh, outdone at this point. Yeah, it's no longer a challenge. Um, so, uh, we're going to leave this underground cavern. Uh, we've still got the swag blade because we like it for the next chapter. Um, as you can see, we're just going to walk straight out. But next to that body, there is actually normally a bomb, and that is what uh, Diane destroyed earlier off screen with that swag blade. And into chapter four, reactor, we go. Oh boy, uh, chapter four. Already, you know, we are flying through this. Don't worry, lots and lots to go. So, we're going to see a door at the bottom here, which has two switches. It's locked. We're going to go to the left room first. We need to hit a switch on the left. Diane says this room is cursed, but it kind of is still today. Oops. One more go. Oh, did you hit it? It's always cursed. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Nice. So, yeah, you, you uh, the game kind of wants you to walk over and hit it with your sword by killing all these enemies, but actually you can just hit it with a shuriken from distance if you're a good shot. Um, and you're gonna do. We're gonna do the same in this room as well. I actually find this room slightly more difficult than the other room. I'll be honest. Oof. <laughs> nice. Oh. 
There okay, that go. was pixel perfect. I, t I really, I was, I was scared of the swag blade the entire time. Yeah, the swag blades can certainly cause some difficulties. It's, it, it's one of those weapons that you have to get very, very good with, and even then, it still screws you over sometimes. Um, cool. So we are starting to get into the bowels of the reactor now. So the name of the game on this level is essentially lots and lots of really annoying enemies that get in the way and lots of instant death. Um, there's also long kind of sections without a checkpoint, so, um, essentially it's, it, sometimes it can just become about staying alive. Um, so there's lots and lots of ways you can damage boost through certain areas and, uh, manipulate certain areas in terms of the cycles. Uh, like there, as you saw, Diane took a damage boost through that energy beam. Um, however, at some point, uh, depending on how well it goes, it may get to the stage where health is too low and you have to start playing very carefully. But right now, we are doing just fine. Um, we're about to jump into our first uh, cyber dive room, which is where we go inside one of these computers. This room is actually broken um, because normally you're supposed to hit the right switch and the left switch, but actually you can just hit the right switch with a shuriken and leave, and uh, the door is or open for you upstairs um, for some reason. Yeah. I wasn't sure if you were going to go for the nutter there. No, 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 no. I missed. Uh, I had. I had two health. I'm not going to risk that. <laughs> I didn't notice that, to be fair. Uh, you can get through that section very, very quickly by putting yourself at great risk. Uh, it's a strat called the Nutter, which uh, we didn't do today. But that's okay. It was probably not worth it. <laughs> the checkpoint's quite far back. Yeah, that definitely was not a <laughs> brisket si or biscuit situation. Yeah. Cool. Uh, look, so we, we are just continuing to work our way through. Um, yeah, essentially, uh, it's, it's it's a lot of just kind of working our way through, avoiding these enemies and making sure that we're getting the uh, getting through and avoid getting the right cycles. Um, we're about to come up to a, a very dangerous section, um, which we'll see in a second. But essentially, if you're too fast or too slow through here, it doesn't quite work out. What we're going to see is Diane drop through this floor all the way to the next floor and then drop through again. If any of that was messed up, that was that looked very straightforward. That was made to look very, very easy. If any of that was wrong, he would have hit the spikes instead, which is a one hit kill, and you have to go all the way back to the last checkpoint. Here's Fluffy. Oh, Fluffy's being mean. Fluffy's being really mean. Unfortunate. We're gonna see a bit more of Fluffy, so hopefully- Yikes. Yikes. Unlucky. That's gonna cost me a minute. Yeah. See, that's the thing in this game is that, you know, any particular death will cost you, you know, potentially a minute or more. Um, but uh, yeah, it's not exactly RNG, but it's... That's very rare, actually, this death. That was, uh, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> um, but it's a, you know what, it's a good demonstration of how the spikes are a one-hit death there, so, uh, you know, that's what you want to show, I'm sure. I'm very sure I was just uh, about to demonstrate to you how lethal actually this section can be. Yeah. If you're anything off cycle here. It's actually really, like, honestly, this is one of the hardest sections of the game to learn well. Uh, there we go. Showing off this trick again. Um, yeah, because this level and, and also the previous level are kind of quite long as well, there's just so many different areas to learn inside out. Um, although I wouldn't want to put anyone off from wanting to learn this game because honestly, once you've got it down, it becomes kind of like driving a car and you get more frustrated about the little things that can go wrong rather than just trying to remember all the big things. Let's see what Fluffy's doing. Ah, he's fine. Didn't even move. All good. <laughs> we can breathe easy now. Kind of. Uh, I say that, I mean, this next section is no joke either, so... <laughs> as is the rest of the game. It's funny because, you know, you, you get this sense every, as you go through this, like, oh, you know, we can take a breath there and it's okay. Actually, the next section is just as hard. Fluffy being uh, kind to us again after messing us up before. Um, if you hadn't caught on, Fluffy is the name of this kind of snakehead guy. Uh, the thing about Fluffy is it can move... It's not random, but it kind of is random almost. I'm not exactly sure, but it certainly seems to pick a different direction every time, and sometimes it gets in your way, and sometimes it positions itself exactly where you want it. Um, I'm not sure how random it is, or if it's kind of based on what you're doing a little bit, but um, it's certainly very frustrating.
nearly there. Oh, that's uh, that's nice. Grab that safety health there. Cool. So we are about to purchase our third sub weapon of the game, which is the charge blaster, uh, and we're coming up to our uh, the boss of well, the mid boss of this uh, level. Uh, so this is Mecha Dragon. This is the most RNG heavy boss of the game. So essentially, we're going to drop these platforms into the water, which are what we're going to need to stand on. Mecha Dragon is underneath us there. He can go 50-50 left or right. He has gone left. Uh, Diane has hit him with a full charge blaster and has taken off four. Nearly 75% of his health there, so it's an excellent start to this fight. Um, as you can see, Mecha Dragon uh, destroys the platforms that we're standing on. We're going to hit him with another full charge blaster, and that's a two cycle. Excellent fight. That's exactly what you want. Uh, really well done there, Diane. I'm glad at least Mecha Dragon uh, was helping me out here a little. He's like, ah, oh, you're behind. Let's make up some time here. <laughs> Absolutely. That Mecha Dragon can be three, four, five cycles if you're really unlucky. Now we're going to go into this next temple section where we're going to fight against a stationary crystal. Seems easy, right? No, because this crystal is going to throw out ninjas uh, when it takes damage. These ninjas are could be close, which is very nice, but if they hit the ground, they start defending themselves. So you can't destroy them in one hit anymore, which is very, very annoying. Um, so as you saw, that one blocked Diane's hit there, and so did that one, and now they can take some damage. Um, so yeah, it's, it slows things down quite considerably when you have to... Oh no, this guy's being really annoying. Oh god. This is a perfect example of what goes <laughs> wrong! <laughs> I, I, I'll be honest with you, that, uh, you know, that was uh, pretty bad. That was pretty unlucky. <laughs> but there we go. You know, you, the game takes and the, the game gives and the game takes away. Um, but we did just pick up a new power up, which is fantastic. Um, it's perhaps one of the least interesting power ups because it just actually makes your weapon do much more damage. As you can see, the sword slash is now much larger than it used to be. So we're now doing uh, two damage instead of one with our sword. We're going to grab another Charge Blaster on the way. That's going to help us out. Um, now, the Charge Blaster, essentially, what's interesting, as, as I mentioned earlier, is you take damage uh, as you... The, the weapon takes damage as you take damage. So if we were going for kind of world record or something here, uh, we would try and keep the Charge Blaster probably all the way through this level and all the way through the next level to be able to use it for some skips. Um, but because it's a marathon, uh, there is a much safer strat we can use in a second where we're going to actually buy a different sub-weapon for the shield. Um, and we're going to use that one instead because it's quite a bit safer and it, uh, yeah, well, it's just safer, really. Yeah, the shield makes me, um, immune to projectiles, is. which is really nice it's, to have. Now you're immune to projectiles from the front, and this is the boss of the chapter, a vessel defense system. So, uh, you hit it once, you destroy all of its uh, little nodes here, and then it becomes vulnerable, but it also shoots at you and charges up the floor. Uh... Then we're gonna rising fire it. Well, that's already finished. <laughs> it's it's very hard to explain that boss <laughs> in the time that you're fighting it. <laughs> it is uh, very very much choreographed uh, into the what you call it uh, system. You have to do it in a very specific way. You have to meet certain uh, points. Otherwise, you take damage, and as soon as you take damage, um, yeah, the the entire fight goes wrong. <laughs> You'd better off resetting. That's it. So uh, we're about to pick up one of the best abilities in the whole game. This is the parry. Uh, this is actually very difficult to master, but once you do, you're able to knock back projectiles at enemies, which comes in incredibly handy for the rest of the game. Um, so yeah, we're on to chapter five, which is research lab. You're about to see uh, Diane attempt to hold onto this shield throughout most of this most of this chapter by taking uh, ho hopefully less than three damage, um, ideally no damage. Um, as you can see, the shield is able to absorb some of those projectiles, but sometimes you'll see Diane actually knock them back as well. They'll kind of go blue, and then he'll make a slash motion, and they will get knocked back uh, towards the enemy that fired them. Um, so yeah, this is again going to be another chapter where we're going to be taking advantage of our knowledge of the various cycles in the game, but we're also going to be using all of our abilities that we have so far uh, to our advantage. These purple enemies can be a real pain because they're not exactly random, they kind of follow what you're doing. Uh, so if you're a little too fast or a little too slow, they position differently. Sometimes they do anyway just to mess with you, um, and they can cause some real problems. Um, so there we go, nice. Already through the first section, uh, we've got uh, uh, all of this is dangerous to be honest with you. Um, nice, uh, sniped out the uh, floating guy there. As you can see, these crabs are just following uh, Diane around, which is if you let them stop, they will shoot at you. We're gonna smash through this, 
uh, and then go up and over. This is why the shield is safer, by the way, as well, because the shield can actually absorb these projectiles from the walls uh, that fire them, whereas the Charge Blaster is not able to do that, so you have to be able to be really, really on point with your parries if you're going to be using the Charge Blaster instead. Um, but this shield does give you a little bit more safety. Um, and also, uh, you may see this on the right-hand side, this has been happening quite a bit as well, these walls kind of follow you uh, and put a time impetus on you making it through the level, so you can't take your time, you can't mess around, here comes one from the bottom. Uh, and that will one-shot you if it touches you. Here comes the first skip. He's going to shoot the shield. The shield actually goes through the door that was already closed and opens a switch. Normally, you have to go up and over. Uh, oh. Here is Alpha 1. Yeah, he's a good friend. You just He's a little bit scary and intimidating at first, but he's a good friend. I mean, look at him. He's <laughs> trying to get his thoughts together. Sometimes you need to bang your head against the floor. Right? Yeah, I completely agree. You know, sometimes that is, that's what's necessary. Um, cool. So, uh, Alpha 1 is just going to throw you against the wall uh, and dash through the door, and he is out of here. Um, you're going to wake up. Uh, Elgeon's going to drop you some health, which you're going to completely ignore. Poor Elgeon. He, he never gets any love. Like, you just completely ignore him every time. I can't he just help it. Help. <laughs> he slows he just me wants down. To yeah. Um, cool. Um, so that was the first skip uh, done and dusted, which we needed the shield for. We now just need to hold on to the shield for one more skip. Unfortunately, what stands between us and that skip is uh, one of our first fights with uh, Alpha 1, which we're going to come up to shortly. Uh, as, you, as you can see, we're being chased through the level once again by this uh, kind of fast moving wall section, which will kill us if we wait around. And on to Alpha 1. So Alpha 1 is going to fire these projectiles at us, which uh, Diane is going to parry back, uh, which does an incredible amount of damage. And there we go. That's a very nice three cycle. Congratulations. Nice and quick. Yeah, with the shield, it makes it a lot safer. You have to worry less about uh, parrying it perfectly. Um, so I just have three health left. I think I'm safe for the second skip, but this next room is kind of cursed. Yeah, this whole area is super dicey because as you can see now, things are going to get very difficult because there's spikes coming out of the floor and the ceiling. Some are longer than others. So it's about knowing where they're coming from and using essentially your movement and your jumping and your airstrike to uh, go through the level without taking any damage, which is really difficult, even though these are kind of fixed damage emplacements, like these are areas which, you know, you, you know where they're going to come from. It, it just, it's still very difficult to make it through perfectly every time because it does have to be pixel perfect in a lot of places. Um, Diane has done it though. He's made it look incredibly easy and that is skip number two. He's going to fire the shield through the door and that opens up a door which we will show later. Um, he's going to reload the game because we don't want the shield for this section. This is uh, Alpha 3. Here he is. So Alpha 3 has this eye and he's going to fire these... Uh, energy balls out of the eye, which are going to get parried backwards, and after three of those, he's going to open himself up, which allows Diane to start air striking into the middle of the boss, uh, nearly killing him, does an incredible amount of damage, and there he goes, he's finished him off. Uh, and that that was Alpha 3, already done and dusted. Are we killing him, or...? I tripped over him. I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't have to kill him, but uh, I guess I guess we did stay. So this door is open. Normally you have to go all the way up and around, um, but uh, the skip we used earlier allowed this door to be open, and now we're into Falcon Shrine, possibly the most difficult shrine in the whole game. No, I'm kidding. You just destroy that uh, green orb, and uh, you're already done. But you do pick up. I don't know. I keep saying this about every ability, but the coolest ability in the game. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this definitely unlocks the game into the next segment. Yeah. So what you'll be able to see, what, what we've just unlocked is the ability to sprint. Okay. But what's really much cooler than that is now that uh, we can sprint, we can actually dash as well. So what happens here is if we have SP, as if we have the blue uh, energy in the top left corner, you can see that uh, Shadow does a kind of blue dash instead of a, a non-blue dash. When he does that blue dash through enemies, he is able to chain further dashes on top of that. And also those enemies that he dashed into drop uh, more SP. So essentially, if you can time it right, you can get into an infinite cycle of being able to dash, pick up more SP and dash again and again and again until you run out of things to dash into. That's exactly correct. Yeah. 
we are off into chapter six which is robot factory and this is going to start going very very quickly now because we have that dash ability so as you can see we are making full use of that dash ability uh smashing through as many enemies as we can um and essentially just accelerating through the level this is where uh the knowledge of the run uh and using this ability precisely becomes very very key because obviously things are almost moving too quickly to keep track of now um so it's often about knowing where things are before they appear um oh you've triggered an angry sun there are alarms in this level um unfortunately some of them you can't avoid or you can avoid but it takes too long to avoid them so you kind of trigger them on purpose um but yeah they essentially cause turrets to come out of the ceiling and they cause that angry sun to uh start flying around after you there's another one so uh diane actually triggered that one on purpose because it causes these turrets to come out which makes dashing through the level a lot faster there goes another one Just too fast for the Angry Sun. The Angry Sun's just off screen. Yeah, the uh, Angry Sun really doesn't like me. Um, I don't like it either, so we're just out of here. Yeah. Trigger the uh, alarms intentionally here uh, to make sure that we've got lots of things to dash through. And we are at the end boss of Chapter 6. That was all of Chapter 6. I believe you want some quiet here. Thank you. Okay, we're in the clear. Fantastic work. Cool. Um, so this this boss uh, essentially can be quite tricky because um, it, it fires these uh, projectiles at you, which you have to parry back towards it. Um, and you have to parry a lot of them back, so you have to really time your parries extremely well. Um, so uh, well done, Diane, for, um, for managing that effectively. Um, that was Tunnel Cleaner. He follows your train uh, all the way out. Uh, and now that he's dead, we've picked up some health and we can move on to chapter 7. Uh, which is, I believe, the Streets of Rage chapter, right? That's what exactly. we're calling it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, another very, very fast chapter. They're all going to be very fast, I'm not going to lie to you. Oh, we're starting again. <laughs> there we go. Cool. So Diana started actually by buying a spirit recovery because he wants to be able to use his uh, blue dashes to be able to get through the level fast. We've come up to our first knock knock. These enemies are incredibly frustrating because they kind of move very awkwardly in the direction that you don't want them to go half the time. And they fire projectiles at you, which do quite a lot of damage. I believe three damage per hit, which you can parry back. Um, that first one isn't too bad, but we're going to come up against one later, which is a lot more difficult. We picked up our first checkpoint already. Uh, still speeding through the level and this is knock knock 2 what makes knock knock 2 a lot more difficult is these moving platforms are your only stable base diane's already handled it uh no point in continuing talking about that it's already dead uh but yeah essentially if you get hit by that knock knock half the time you end up being knocked downwards into the spikes uh which is very difficult uh this door can be a problem because there's quite a lot of enemies around uh but we're just going to parry some hits in and airstrike our way through very nice and we are into the underground section of outskirts. Something you might see as well is sometimes when we have no SP, we're able to still do the dash, but Mix has come to a kind of an abrupt stop and we can't follow it up with another dash. But sometimes that's useful because if there's nothing to hit, um, you can actually just spam the dash uh, and strike button to uh, go um, very, very quickly. Uh, well, as, I don't know how else to put that, but essentially you're able to spam the dashes. Um, cool. So we have just picked up uh, another new item that we haven't seen yet. This is the SP dispenser. It is following Shadow around. Every time it drops uh, something uh, out of the air, it's essentially, you can see this plus one symbol, uh, and it's actually giving uh, Shadow an SP every single time. So it's an SP dispenser. Now we're going to try and hold on to this SP dispenser for the next two chapters, I think? Yeah, I'm... I'll do my best with it. <laughs> well, even if you don't, there is obviously ways to get new one, a new one at least, so it's okay. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of key reasons why we want to hold on to this thing, uh, not least because it allows us to keep using our special abilities pretty much as much as we want, um, and dashing through all these enemies crazy fast. Um, as you can see, you can keep an eye on this with us. So it's got three health at the moment, so we want to stay it to we want to see it stay at least above one, obviously. We're now into our next cyber dive room. 
This is the second of three. Uh, so we're going to need to defeat a very quick mini boss in here to unlock uh, this next section. Piece of cake. Nice work. Phew. Yeah, this thing has been giving me worries lately. There's this one small, really, really small one block gap that if you make a slight mistake trying to parry him, you will fall down into it. Ugh. Yeah, it's happened to me and every time I, I get scared when I get close to it since it's happened. It's one of these things you're just so conscious of now. Yes, it, it, it keeps me on guard every time. So we are into Dragon Shrine. Uh, this is uh, Shenron the Dragon. Uh, he is going to let us use the Dragon Balls to wish our friends back, and that is the end of the game. Thanks for coming, everyone. No, I'm kidding. He's going to uh, power up all our abilities um, for some reason. Um, so now we can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, as you just saw, we can now double jump, which is really important straight away because it's the only way that we're going to get out of this hole that we just jumped in. Um, you can't get out of here without a double jump. Um, but uh, also, it essentially allows us to do charge attacks as well. So now uh, Shadow can hold down, or Diane can hold down the button and charge up uh, an attack. And that can be used in a variety of different ways because it can charge up all of the special abilities as well. Ooh, things are about to get very, very quick indeed. This is Return to Mecha City. This is the longest chapter in the game, um, but it is also one of the fastest. Um, we're doing a quick restart there because we didn't want to take that damage. Yeah, unfortunately, I lost the SP dispenser for that. It's okay, you can buy another one. Um, so, this is going to be some very, very precise air dashing. Okay, so essentially what we're seeing here is uh, lots of quick sprints and then dashing through, avoiding a lot of enemies as where as possible. And just dashing through as much as possible as well. This is all very precisely rooted, um, but it's also incredibly difficult to pull off. You you know, if you ever learn this game, you will spend a lot of time practicing this. Uh, here we're going to buy our replacement SP dispenser. Uh, I I was planning to, but oh no, <laughs> this is rare. Oh, no, I didn't I even notice your essence. <laughs> no, me neither. <laughs> Uh, you need 50 essence, so but that's okay because these two lanterns will drop it. Okay, let's just go. let's just do it properly. Let's pretend uh, this never happened. This never <laughs> happened before. Oh no! Look, it's an SP dispenser. <laughs> Looks like uh, you know it was really handy that you were able to buy that there. Um, so, you know, uh, congratulations. We uh, saved the run. Um, cool. Um, so, we are now coming up to uh, Exo, but before we can act Exo is uh, this uh, bike, but before we can activate Exo, we have to go into this extra cyber dive room, because uh, Exo is locked in place. Uh, and will talk to us if we try to talk to Exo, but uh, basically needs our help to lead. Um, so we have to go into this cyber dive room, defeat another small mini boss. Uh, and then we will be able to board Exo. Now, what's going to be interesting is after this mini boss is dead, we're going to see why the SP dispenser is so key. Because essentially, what's going to happen is normally the SP dispenser will give us SP when we're short of SP. However, um, what's going to happen is Diane is going to get rid of all of the SP before boarding Exo, so that uh, he's on zero SP. Okay, and then when we're on Exo, Exo can't use SP. Okay, so essentially, what's going to happen is the SP dispenser is going to go, oh man. Man, I have to give you something, so he's going to start giving us money instead. ATM dispenser is live. <laughs> Online and on three health. Fantastic. Um, now, uh, as you can see, our money is going up in the corner. That's very, very handy. So uh, SP dispenser is already going to be paying for itself. Um, this is an auto scroller. So uh, yeah, um, not really much to say about this. It's uh, just lots of jumping over stuff. Um, it is the same every single time. It literally never changes. <laughs> Cool music, though. We have a bike ride. We're riding on a yeah. bike. And we're going fast. <laughs> I, I'm not complaining. I like this. Yeah, this is, this is... Would you say this is the most relaxing part of the run? Because at least, you know, you can just chill out and you know what's going to happen. Yeah, it's one of the... It's one of the breathing room spaces. You've just beaten... Um, like, one of the hardest uh, parts of chapter... Eight. Oh, no, I'm lying. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> This game only gets harder, it only gets more punishing. 
Um, but yeah, there is there is an achievement you can get for doing this whole section without taking any damage called Don't Scratch the Paint. Um, so, you know, when you get better at it, there's an achievement to be had. Uh, and it's uh, not, a, not a difficult achievement to get because uh, everything is the same every time you go through. Um, I'm keeping this one alive. Bob is a yeah. hero. Yeah, that's funny because the, the enemies will just leave. If they don't hit you, they just kind of give up and go. Yep. Uh-oh. I guess it's uh, time to step on the gas. Because <laughs> in this case, uh, the motorcycle is like, uh, well, I don't think I can escape this, so I'll just... Um, Eject. <laughs> Luckily, Exo, the bike comes with the best safety system ever. Uh, and you've got this crazy bubble that you get to bounce around in. Um, so, we're into the midsection between uh, the two Exo sections. Essentially, what's going to happen here is we've crashed our bike. We now have to go and catch up with Exo again. We still need to hold on to our SP dispenser because we want to make some uh, more money out of it. Uh, uh, we want to, sorry, use it for the next chapter as well. I wasn't sure if you were going to try and uh, go through this door um, uh, the, the special way. I tried it, but uh, unfortunately I was too high for the setup. Ah, that's a shame. You can do a weird kind of uh, dash where you just go straight through the door and end up on the other side if there is an enemy beforehand. Cool. We are on to our next uh, exo section and uh, we're back to uh, getting money out of the SP dispenser. So this section's money. a little bit different. Sorry, go on. No, it was, I was just commentating like, Mr. Krabs, you know, I like money. <laughs> exactly that. Absolutely. And you need money. Uh, you know, you really do need money uh, for especially the later sections of this game as well. Um, so look, this is just a kind of a big pew pew section. You just kind of uh, run along as Exo, just smashing through the enemies. Um, you kind of do have to be somewhat careful because they can kill you. Uh, you know, there are some of the things that do quite a lot of damage. Um, we're coming up to our midsection boss, and we are going to attack aggressively. Um, literally, he actually tells you how to kill this boss quickly, uh, speedrun style, because you really do just need to stand next to it and just spam the fire button until the dropship leaves. There we go. He's done. That was the end of dropship. Um, it, you couldn't see it, but the dropship actually does drop enemies. Um, but they were dying as they were coming out, so... They just kind of, the dropship kind of just dropped money instead. Probably a good time to point out as well that you are seeing uh, the chat boxes and the cutscenes fly past at an incredible rate of speed. Um, there is a chat skip feature, or sorry, a text skip, skip feature in this game that the developer put in much later on than after it came out. We actually used to have to skip text manually by mashing the buttons, which was um, difficult and a little bit awkward because you ended up pressing extra buttons you didn't need to press sometimes. Um, but the developer kindly added in a uh, text skip feature and now we can just hold down two buttons and skip through it at maximum speed. Well, that's what you think, but we still mash your text. Yeah, we still. Do you really? <laughs> yes. Um, oh if you if you on. if you hold if you hold the chat skip button and you actually mash um, the confirm button at the same time, you actually still go through your text faster. So you basically hold the chat skip and mash. Oh my god, I didn't know that. See, I'm learning things. That's uh, <laughs> a new thing every day. So, this was our non-boss fight against Apparator. We start to hate Apparator. You may remember him from the start of the game, but he's come along and he's blown up Exo. Rip, our best friend. We only Sad knew times. her for so short. Mm. Unfortunate. Um, he, uh, Apparator has also left us on 1 HP, so, uh, Diane is gonna try and do this next section on 1 HP. Uh, this is one of the hardest sections of the whole game. Um, I'm gonna stay a little bit silent for this. Perfectly executed. Well done. That section is is really really difficult, um, just because of the amount of enemies flying around on the screen at the same time, following you around, uh, and you just basically have to execute every single one of your dashes perfectly. Um, if you mess any of them up, you know, you, obviously on one health you're going to die to anything, uh, but even on full health you can actually end up getting knocked into spikes and taking a one hit death anyway. Um, so really well done on that, Diane. 
Um, so this uh, whole level, essentially, uh, is us making our way back from uh, where we were before to the third chapter. So what you're seeing is you're seeing repeats of the old chapters. So we just saw um, the robot factory, or briefly saw part of the robot factory again. Uh, we saw the actual tunnel at the start of chapter three there, although you wouldn't recognize it. We are now back into the part of the reactor. Um, but it's just us basically getting a, a tour of the older levels uh, and, and uh, making our way all the way back through to Chapter 3 so that we can continue with the rest of the game. Um, very nicely done. This whole section is quite tricky because, again, you have to be so precise with all of your dashes and so forth. Uh, otherwise, you are going all the way back to quite a far away checkpoint. There's a fluffy. There's a second fluffy. They're both being pretty good. Excellent work. Still got our SP dispenser. Oof, and we're in good shape. I say this before the lift. Sometimes these purple guys can be a pain. But not today. Ooh. We are out. Well done. That is chapter 8, the longest chapter in the game. Congratulations. I actually have the SP dispenser still. I went yeah. for it, trying to keep it safe. <laughs> Absolutely, and that's going to pay off for you in this chapter as well. Um, so chapter 9 uh, is a water level. Um, it, we introduce these mines on the floor. So essentially, if uh, Diane lands in the water, the mines will come over. They will actually magnetize towards Shadow and explode, uh, doing pretty much most of your health. I think it's like 6 damage. Um, so yeah, that's 5 or 6 damage. Yeah, it's, it's a lot, um, so you don't want to land next to them. Um, one of the things you're going to notice straight away is you're going to recognize this enemy again. Um, so both that uh, sort of thing that we just blew up there, plus these turrets. Uh, these are actually bits of the hunter tank that we destroyed in Chapter 3. Um, so it's being transported somewhere, um, and so we've kind of fought part of it again there. So we're going to go up the top here for safety. Very nice. Making it look super easy. We're barely seeing any of Chapter 9. So essentially, look, we're just smashing our way through here. Um... Oh, very cool. So that box is a little bit strange because uh, for some reason you can dash through it. It, it's, it. it does have sides, but when you try to dash through it, uh, you are able to dash through it, which is a bit crazy. And here we're going to try and skip the start of this boat by jumping in the water. And there we are. Well done. So essentially what you normally have to do on that section is you normally have to destroy that lump of sludge uh, and uh, you have to watch a whole kind of thing whilst the boat starts up and leaves, which costs a lot of time. What Diane was able to do there was jump in the water and manipulate the game in a certain way that allowed uh, the game to essentially skip right to this section where we're already on the boat and we're already uh, sailing our way to chapter 10. This is the final auto-scroller of the game. Um, there's nothing we can do here but fight enemies who break out of these boxes and come flying in from the sky. Uh, there are many ways to do this, um, essentially. Um, the, the purple ones drop fire from the sky, which is quite annoying because it remains for a long time uh, and it blocks off part of the boat so you can't stand there anymore. This is unfortunately um, a slow boat. We didn't get the enemy I needed. That is a, a real shame. So there is a fast boat and there is a slow boat. So essentially, uh, we're going to have a slow boat where we have to, after this, after the enemies have finished spawning, we're going to have to stand there and basically watch Shadow sail along for about 10 seconds. Uh, but you can get fast boat where the scene ends right away, pretty much, and goes straight into the next chapter, uh, next next section. Now specifically um, for the boats, we have Bob here. He's a diving instructor and... Oh. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, you know, he gave his life for the cause. Yeah, he was riding his bike earlier just to catch up on his... Uh... <laughs> he was going to be late for work. Yeah. But uh, I have to backtrack a little cool. bit first. On to chapter 10, the final chapter of the game. Um... I'm going to um, cut you in here. I am going to have to backtrack a little bit. Oh, of course. Yeah, absolutely. I forgot. It's uh, egg percent. <laughs> uh-huh. So the first thing I'm going to do is... There's a very conspicuous little spot here. I don't know if you guys can hear it. But it spawns a button, and that's the way you can find this. So, this is a this is a very very short Easter egg based thing. This is a very hidden room, and as you can see, it kind of warps us around. So we know that if you dash left and right for a couple of times, you get the egg, which was nicely hidden here. And of course, we can always pick a color, but default is the best one. Nice. And then we head off to chapter... Uh, let me think for a second. Four? 
Oh, wrong yeah, direction. I mean, does it? Is there a? Is there a uh, order you have to do them in or? Uh, yeah, no, not really. It's just more like you have to uh, remind yourself that there are certain things you have to pick up. Yeah. So I prefer to go one, four, and then, oh, what was the order again? Um, three, one, four, two, one. Okay. Nice. Egg. <sighs> yeah, you can stay stuck there for quite a long while. But yeah, the best order to go around is if you um, actually pick uh, one, four, and then um, grab the swag blade over here. And then avoid the checkpoint for the next uh, segment. Because we have to bring back the swag blade uh, from this point on to uh, back to chapter 8. I should have done that a little bit earlier to make it easier, but it's okay. We're still on time. Yeah. So what I'm going to do here is uh, go back to chapter 8 because there's a very hidden block. Um, people who might have noticed it could see it already when I passed through a certain room. But you really had to pay a lot of <coughs> <coughs> you really had to pay a lot of attention for that okay so yeah. avoiding this check hitting the checkpoint means that i can use a small death warp uh to get back a little bit faster well so. this is uh what the people paid for <laughs> let's see here yeah we're we're not done after the game is over we still have to show off one more thing. So as you can see yeah. here, there's this little swag blade icon here nice. to the left. So if you hit it, you can see we have to hit a few more switches. And there we go. There we go. Very well done. And with this, we have unlocked Shadow's true power, which is kind of like Zelda does things. Um, you have now this egg blade, as I call it. Because you can fire eggs from it, I guess. <laughs> so OP. And we're dead. And we're dead. Uh, does that count? Oh for no! The death death uh, counter. I don't think it counts for the death counter, but okay, we can take it enough. if we want to. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go try and get a combinatron skip here, but it's very dangerous to pull it off, or at least very tight. So I'm just gonna try it. So a couple of times, of course. To, oh, sorry. Yeah, you can explain. Do here is, yeah, um, it, it, essentially, uh, what you can do is uh, you can skip this boss by dashing. Ah, and he's already done it. Well done. Congratulations. Very well done. Um, he was able to dash through the, the fire that appears to the right-hand side, uh, which skips the boss entirely. Um, and then we skipped a cutscene section by not touching the floor in the next area, and we are already well into Chapter 10, where we're going to be dashing all the way through, all the way to the end. Uh, no floor in this section at all, so very, very scary. Um, we make it up, we use the enemies to climb along with our airstrike. Uh, again, kind of no floor here either, I mean, unless you count spikes as the floor, which uh, I don't. Um, lots of no floor sections in this whole chapter, really. Um, but yeah, lots and lots of very, very precise dashing. Um, getting that little turret at the top there is very, very difficult as well, because its hitbox is absolutely tiny. Here we go, another flawless section, in both senses of the word. Now we've just got to hit that button and wait a really long time for these doors to open. There we go, nice. Still got that SP dispenser going, which is fantastic. Having the SP dispenser in this section is just so helpful. Uh, we've got another nice slow door section uh, where we have to hit this switch and wait a really long time for these doors to open. Then we're going to uh, hit that switch and we have to stand here destroying these plants for a while. They essentially fire these projectiles at you to kind of follow you around. And there we go. So we are on to the boss of this section. This is Spider Rail. Diane is actually already hitting Spider Rail off screen with the uh, rising fire there, the charged up rising fire, I should add. Um, 
I'm also going to be using the charged up kunai, as you can see there, which is kind of, it's basically the charged up shuriken. That's a, an excellent spider rail, really well done there. And the reason why spider rail's health just went melted away there is because uh, Diane, he actually fires these kind of uh, donuts at you, energy beam donuts, and uh, Diane actually reflected back all of them uh, and was able to hit the boss with all of them, which uh, just melted his health away completely. We are on to the, well, basically the very, very final section of the game. We call this the climb, uh, because it is a climb. Uh, the reason why is because we're going to be using the airstrike to uh, bounce off of enemies, which are going to do their best to be a complete pain in the ass to us uh, by going in all the places that we don't expect them to go and don't want them to go. But we're going to be trying to bounce off of their heads um, and make it up to the top of this area. Even the best of us uh, make a lot of mistakes here, uh, but this seems to be going okay so far. I'm going to jump onto there for a quick breather, and we're done with that section. This bit's a little bit easier, even though uh, well, it's still tricky. Uh, you're essentially using the lanterns uh, and these red lights to airstrike up and climb. You don't see it yet, but those airstrikes, uh, sorry, those red lanterns do actually um, hatch enemies. That's why we're able to hit them. We're not able to hit all of them. Uh, we're going to pick up another SP dispenser here, and we are on to the final boss section of the game. It's Apparator. He's back, and he's had some upgrades, and he still sucks. We are just going to make complete mincemeat of Apparator. Although he is, he does have cool music, and he's able to fire a satellite beam at us. He's already done. He's over. Yeah, Finished. Apparator is basically a pushover at this point. <laughs> However, he is not the final boss of the game. Uh, Progenitor is. Um, so uh, Progenitor sits in this weird brain thing. Uh, he has two phases to the fight. So he is inside this area that needs to be, this shielded off area that needs to be opened with a hit. Um, and once that's done, uh, he's able to take damage. However, he's going to fire uh, these bombs at uh, Shadow. And he's also going to fire these fireballs that when they land on the ground, fire um, more fireballs kind of up in the air, which can be parried. Progenitor 1 is already defeated. And we are on to Progenitor 2. Uh, we're going to start damaging him as soon as we're available to. He's got these three kind of orb sections on his front. Um, as we destroy them, we these other kind of blue, uh, green, and yellow orbs appear, uh, which give us extra abilities in this fight. The orange one is the, one of the most important ones. This blue one is giving us an invulnerability. The orange one is what you're supposed to use to hit uh, Progenitor when he's up in the air. But because we're speedrunners, we don't really care. We're going to use our other abilities to hit him up in the air instead, or as well as. And he is already done for. I'm gonna go do something very stupid now. Oh no. Yes. Yes. Oh god. He did it! Whew. <laughs> do you want to just tell us what you did there? Well, there is a skip you can do, which uh, prevents you um, um, having to wait there. There's a death plane that spawns at the bottom, but if you jump off or run off at the edge um, for the very last second, you can save uh, 0.5 of a second, but if you die and you mismanage it, you have to redo all the fights all over again. All yeah. of them. <laughs> And I mean, that is like a three minute time loss or something stupid. For just a 0 0.5 second time save. <laughs> exactly. That, yeah. Um, so our friend Elgion, who, uh, you know, uh, we were obviously so good to throughout the game, because, uh, uh, you know, we really deserve his help, actually comes to rescue us and stop us falling to our death. Um, and uh, those three orbs that we rescued from Progenitor earlier turn out to be some kind of elementals that give us special powers. Uh, and we become kind of one of them. There is a storyline to this game. I'll be honest with you, none of us really know it that well. Uh, because there's just, a, there's just a lot kind of missing. But here is the master. This was the objective of the game all along. Nice usage of the shurikens to open the, up the switches much quicker. Very cool. And there we go, that's time. That is the official time, yes. There's one more thing left to do for Egg Percent though. But it yeah, is absolutely. time. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you, if you call time when you when you do the last bit, or if you call time when the boss ends on egg percent. But... Well, there is no real hard way to actually um, confirm egg percent with the final thing we have to do. No. Uh, there's no real definite uh, time where you can split it. So we eventually decided that if you beat the game with all the three eggs and then show it afterwards, it's a completed run. So it's a prerequisite to show it. 
But basically, time ends when the boss is defeated, like right now. Yeah. So there's one more thing we have to do here. Unfortunately, we p perish. Yeah. Sadly, being that elemental thing was too much for Shadow, uh, and Shadow powers down for the last time. I'm gonna Although do... someone... Oh, sorry? Go on, sorry. I was gonna say, someone does come along to plug something into him shortly. Yes, but I'm going to cutscene skip all of that, grab the final end screen, and then we move on to our final thing. Minus there one death. Minus one intentional one death. death. <laughs> Okay, so now it's time to do the one line cool. final so thing. We are going to go and see what reward we got for getting going for egg percent. We first have to climb down a little bit, though. So what the I'm going to what I'm going to be doing is going ahead, uh, going ahead and go to chapter six. So. Why chapter 6? Why Why of all places chapter 6? Well, I'll just show you guys. It's just because it's our favorite chapter. We just love the robot factory. Exactly. You can dash through all these things super fast. But oh, the train is gone! gone. <laughs> and there's just nothing here except for a lone empty robot. There's two secrets here. One of them is what we're gonna find out right now. Egg. 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 I showed you my egg, please respond. <laughs> <laughs> But with that, um, yeah, we are officially done. We have seen our Lord Savior, the Egg Robot. Uh, Diane, you cut out there. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> with you that, said we are, and that was it. <laughs> yeah, with that, uh, we are done with uh, Egg Percent, with the entire run. Uh, this is our Lord and Savior, the Egg Robot. And this has been Cyber Shadow. Uh, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the run. I uh, hope you guys all enjoyed the Egg Percent. A uh, couple of words before I actually want to cut off. Uh, I want to thank Game Over Cancer for having me, for allowing me to run this. Well, I'd say for doing a splendid commentary, really. Uh, and the Cyber Shadow community for being really supportive, uh, being around. Um, yeah, and those are my final words. <laughs> thank you very much, Diane. That was a, a really fantastic run, and thank you for allowing me to come along and, and commentate on it for you. I really enjoyed myself, and uh, I always love watching a good Cyber Shadow run, so thank you. And thanks to you both. Uh, it was a fantastic run. Thank you for showing the Egg Robot. Uh, I will now uh, praise it, and I will now be eating some <laughs> eggs as well. Be enlightened. Uh, it made me quite hungry. Uh, but everybody hold on, we will be right back with some uh, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask All Songs Run with, uh, run by Genesis, so don't go anywhere. <laughs>